How much money did you get for your company? So I will say this, I sold it for more than that, 200,000, less than a million, but it was a good number. I wanna talk about the live virtual junk event followed by the in-person event. This will be a live streaming event that's on my YouTube channel. This is not just gonna be any junk removal event. This is going to be the junk removal event of the century, <laughs> of the decade. Dispatch will be going in beta, so this is going to be a software announcement to let you guys know the software's out. Talk about the software, why we're different than everybody else, and why I'm so excited to bring this junk removal software to you guys. It is going to be the CRM FSM that changes everything. It's going to help you grow, manage, and scale your business. I am very excited to share this software, but what I wanna talk about, what else is in this event, guys, is I'm going to be dropping some insane content in this event. It might be just as good as my course, if not better, and I really don't wanna stress enough, guys, that you make the live virtual event, because if you make the live virtual event, you are eligible for the giveaway and all of the goodies that I'm gonna be giving away, a lot of stuff. One of the things I'm gonna be giving away is a brand new dump trailer. Somewhere between 10 and $15,000 brand new dump trailer and we're going to give it away live. This is not a sales pitch course. There's nothing to sell. Everything is gonna be given for free. And of course my software, you know, well, there'll be a free trial and all that stuff too. But all the goodies and content, the dump trailer, possibly a truck for free. No catches, no gimmicks, no nothing. I won't announce the speakers just yet. I'll wait till we get closer. The live event will probably take around 12 p.m. And then the live event will probably be around 4 or 5 p.m. in person in Los Angeles, close to me, where we can all mingle for a few hours, get to know each other, talk, discuss strategies, and you know, just shoot the shit. I hope tons of you make it to the live virtual event. And if you happen to be close by somewhere in California, I hope you make the in-person event. I'm thinking this is gonna change the home services industry completely, but definitely the junk removal industry. I am very passionate about junk removal because I have been doing it. So this is very close to my heart. So I am going to disrupt the junk removal industry. So please, 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 please register for the live event so you can be notified. You can get updates and you don't miss it. It is going to be incredible. Welcome back to the show, all my hustlers and grinders and go-getters. And we're back with another one. And we got Mr. Jedi, Andrew Thomas in the building, the million dollar man. And we're going to discuss all kinds of stuff and dive deep into the trash business. I'm excited, Jojo. I'm excited too, because he has a lot, a lot of stuff going on right now and a lot of stuff to talk about. So um, let's just bring him on right away and say hi to Jedi. <laughs> hi there. Hey. Hi, Andrew. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. It's been about a year, I do believe. January 10th or 9th makes one year since you guys interviewed me, which was right about when I started my YouTube channel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's great. Well, let's just start right off and introduce yourself for those that, you know, don't know who you are and what you do. Okay, cool. I am also, was a junk caller myself. I'm in Los Angeles, California. I started a junk removal business during COVID. I want to say tail end of 2000. Yeah, it was 2021. Um, I discovered junk removal from a friend and then got onto YouTube found you guys, consumed tons of content, started my junk business. And I guess what kind of really separates me from, you know, a lot of people is I was somebody who was very vocal and very aggressive with Google ads. And I went very hard on Google ads, spent a $300,000 on my first, in my first year on Google ads and, you know, did a million in gross sales my first year. But like, like I said, 300,000 of it was ad spend. And yeah, so I got into the junk removal game mostly because of you guys and it, it saved my life. Amazing business. And yeah, that is the short version. And I recently just exited a successful exit through an actual broker with an escrow company and all the legal hoops that I had to go through, yada, 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 yada. Yeah. Now I'm on to, uh, I'm still going to be in the junk removal industry, but instead of on the field with you guys, I'll be off the field working on some of the, the back end stuff. All right. Um, so, so here's the real question we want to ask is, you might not want to answer this right now, but how much money did you get for your company? Okay. So I knew, I knew that was going to be the first question. So I will say this, I sold it for more than I made every year from the, in profit, not the gross number. So not the 1.1 million number that I do in gross sales, but the, the take home, which was usually like 200,000. So I will say this, I sold it for more than that. Less than a million, 
And I will be sharing that number later this week. I'm doing a huge video on how I sold it, how much I sold it for, showing the legal paperwork, the hoops I had to jump through. But it was a good number, a number that you know I'm happy with. I'm excited because I wanted to get into something we'll talk about later probably. But yeah, I was ready to exit the junk business because from day one, I don't know if you guys see my videos. You probably watched some in the beginning, but you would always hear me say in every video, junk removal is a stepping stone to return to my passion of technology and apps. I invite you to join me on my journey from becoming a junk removal business titan to building a billion dollar home services app. I say that in every video and I've been saying it in every video for a year. That was why I finally decided to exit is because it was time to take the next chapter of my journey. So now, when I'm a tangent there, but I answered it. Yeah. Now, do you still own any part of it at all, or, or is it just gone? The business. It's, yeah, it was actually once I recorded the video that I sold my video, or sold my company. I kind of teared up a little bit. Like I teared up. I was like, "Holy shit! I I'm not in this business anymore." Now, did you sell so, what, all your vehicles and stuff too, or what? Yeah. So everything went with it. The three Google Maps locations, the webs. So it's called what's an asset transfer and everything goes. The vehicles, all the digital assets, my Google ads account, the, the, the most important part, right? That's kind of, that's kind of the money right there is the, the, the Google Maps listing, the website and the Google ads account. So all of that tr transferred to the new owner. And I see people in the, the comments already saying, say the number. Clever Guzman, I will be saying the number. I will be dropping a video very soon this week detailing everything because, oh, my God, there was a lot of learning lessons. But, yeah, it was a complete transfer, man. It is not mine anymore at all. And, yeah, it was kind of emotional because during COVID, I was screwed, right? Like the COVID-free money that they were giving out, just printing out money, just giving it, handing it to everybody was ending. And then I – uh, stumbled upon junk removal and junk removal was really what saved me and my my family like 100 percent. i was on the truck for the first six months hustling and grinding hauling and balling and uh so it was a very emotional transfer for sure but i'm excited for uh what's next i was curious um was your uh, jedi junk removal was that an llc or a corporation so it was an llc that I elected as an S corp. At the end of the day, it is an S corp. Okay. So now the person that bought it, were they in the trash business already, or was it just a brand new person that never ran yes, Google so ads, so. never picked up trash, never priced a job? I got a lot of people who came to buy it because it was running itself. It came to buy the business, not in the business. And it was actually a really frustrating process. And we can talk about that in a, in a little bit, going through buyers and, you know, them getting declined for an SBA loan and yada, yada, yada. I actually got a much higher offer, but they were going to go through the SBA loan process. And I already got denied. They are not me, but they already got denied. Each person took about two months to go through that SBA process. And then I'm like, it's just, it's just. so I was four months in, I got a higher offer and then it came in with a cash buyer. And I was like, it was a lot lower, the price, the cash buyer offer than the, the person who was financing. The person who ended up buying, he is on the same street as my Ventura location. And he runs his own business. He's been in business for five years. He was on the same street that I would, you know, originally where I was parking my trucks and he saw me every day. And then I guess he must have saw the listing and he decided... I'm going to buy this motherfucker. He's driving me crazy. Yeah. So he picked up the business. So I, it was really, it was really awesome because um, there's a lot of things that were awesome about it. I didn't have to teach him much of anything, you know, and he was able to just take over like a, it was awesome. And he didn't even need the ops manager. So that saves him like 80 grand a year because I hired an ops manager because I figured somebody would buy this business who wants to be hands off. That's usually how selling businesses work. Usually most of the time, they want to buy a business just brings them money, right? And there's a manager in place. He ended up getting a, a pretty killer deal. Now, was it a young buck? Was it an older guy? Was it a female? Like, I got to hear the details. Younger than me. Younger than, uh, you. younger than me. Very, very nice fellow. Male. Uh, no, couple. It was, it, was a, it was a couple in the business just like you. A couple in the business. But she did more of the... Uh, lighter on the admin stuff so she wasn't as involved but yeah a young a guy younger than me oh, by the, hey sorry um i don't know if it's me or you guys but they're saying there's a really bad it, echo um, I think it's you. it happened it happens when you're talking it wasn't like that when you first started but now um 
you you kind of you have an echo when you talk, so I'm not sure Let what me check my audio settings. Oh, it's all good. Hopefully the echo went away. Yeah. And then um somebody asked, and I can find it up here, but oh, did uh did the cell include Jedi cleaners? No. So Jedi cleaners is um, something that I'm working on personally to kind of understand the cleaning business. I'm going to do the same with landscaping. I'm going to just lightly tuck into it so that I can eventually have some things that the software needs tailored towards multiple home service companies. Of course, junk removal being the main one. No. So Jedi Cleaners was not included in the sale. Okay. Now, how did you market it? Was it like a, a business sale on a Facebook group? Like how'd you yeah, market yeah. So, business so, I'll tell you the first thing is I was not going to list in the Facebook group because the first thing that you're going to get is a lot of haters. Oh, yeah, for sure. Talking yeah. shit. <laughs> Second, you're probably going to get not the, the true um, value of the business for the, because of the people in it. They understand the industry and they're probably just going to try to lowball you. I literally just Googled Los Angeles business broker, went through all the brokers and picked the most. The guy that looked like he had the most genuineness to him, right? So I called about 10 and then three of them I really talked to, two of them I met up with, and then I found the right one. And a lot of them charge more broker fees. And then some people charge up front. At the end of the day, I went with the guy who doesn't charge up front. One guy was trying to get 3,500 up front. And then one guy was trying to get 15%, another 20%. And then you end up going with the broker with, you know, there's brokers that'll charge as little as five on average 10% of the sale. So somewhere between five and 10% is a good number. Um, never more than that. But I literally just Google and just there's websites like with where brokers list themselves, just like you would find like a lawyer, a place where you find lawyers and there's the lawyers listed or, you know, doctors listed. So it's the same thing with business brokers. Now, how do you find out what your company is worth? Like put a price tag on it. How would you do, do that? So this is a, this is the tricky one, because in tech, it's a lot different than home services. So in tech, it's very easy. If you're in tech and you're in a subscription model like B2B SaaS, which is business to business, software as a service, examples would be Slack, Workies, anything that you subscribe to that helps your business is SaaS software, software as a service. Those are like 15 multiples of your, of your annual revenue. So if you make not profit, revenue, that's the crazy thing about tech. So if you do a million a year in revenue, sales, margins don't matter. You know, unless they're stupid bad or something, but you would 15 times your revenue. So if you do a million a year, you're a $15 million company in tech. There's a lot of variables and a lot of other factors that could, you know, maybe you're in the medical industry and you're, you, you're designing something that's going to be astronomically insane for the medical industry. You might be a hundred X value or 30 X, but in home services, you get a multiple of your gross profit, not your net, your gross your net profits, what happened was what you have after you pay homeboy, Uncle Sam, the, you know, the, the bad guy, <laughs> your gross is what you have after operating expenses and cogs. So if you have your gross profit, for example, let's take mine, let's just call it about average around 200, both years, a little less or a little more. The factors are this. How long have you been around? How many years of tax returns do you have? What's your P&Ls look like? What are your margins? But if you're like a decent business doing oh, like industry standard margins, 20 to 30%, you have solid tax returns, you report all of your revenue, you can get 3X, your gross profit. Up to 5X if you've been around five to seven years and things are kind of running themselves, you can get up to 5X. So let's say your gross profit's 200, you could theoretically get... 600k if you've been in business for five plus years you can theoretically get 5x you can get up to a million it just really depends on they take a lot of things into consideration your tax returns your your profit margins how long you've been in business and do you have a lot of repeat customers now if you're a business who has been around for not three years aka me you are not going to get three to five x because you have not been in business and the sba makes it very hard to get financed if you're a business who has not been around for three years. So I was, I just hit the two year mark. I had only had one year of tax returns. My tax returns show 1,059,000. That was the only reason I was able, I reported all of my income. Like, you know, didn't hide any of it, reported it all. So I was able to sell. At the end of the day, 
depending on how long you're in business, you can get like 1.5 X your gross profit up to five X your gross profit. Uh, and that's about you. So you could take the average three X your gross profit. You know, like I said, there's a lot of factors, how long you've been in business and all that stuff. Well, um, so why do I got to <laughs> sorry, why? Sasha, sorry to cut you off, but man, I gotta, I gotta clean this bad boy up. Don't I, Matt? Yeah. 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 You don't yeah, want to, you don't, you don't want to know what that looks like. like. <laughs> next time, next time, um, I'll get this cleaned up, but sorry, Matt, Matt and Jojo. Um, what was your question? Um, what, what made you decide to, you know, to sell, sell your business? I mean, you could have done it like a, one more year. I was contemplating. I was seriously waiting to hit that three year mark because I probably, I could have got a couple hundred more grand if I waited another year, but the credit thing was just, it was stressing me out, not on top of just making payroll, paying myself, but constantly having to pay for dump fees and gas and not having a credit card. And then the employees every day stressing about my low limit credit cards. And yes, I did get a secured credit card, right? I did get secured credit cards. You know, I got $2,000 secured credit cards. I increased my limit, but I did that. I ended up doing that like a year later, right? So I finally got secured credit cards. You had to go put four grand down in cash to get my secured credit cards. And I'm still racking up those secured credit cards every three days, every four days. So it's like they still get declined at the dump. I And I will, I might be out shopping with the bad service area. It happened all the time. I might have no signal. And they call me. They're like, Andrew, where's the fucking dump? Again, the credit cards decline. And they sometimes would start co like covering me. And then I'd pay them back. And they got so frustrated. So number one. It was getting stressful to keep scaling. Number two, it was eating me up inside that I was not working on my software. You can't do two things at once. I don't care what people say. If you try to grow, if you're trying to grow a real business, you have to focus on that one business. I hate when people are like, well, look at Elon, look at all these other people, you know, juggling multiple businesses. They also had $50 million in the bank with capital where they can actually pay people to do things for them. And they're like the CEO and they just make executive level decisions. Go do this, go do that, you know, versus getting in the trenches, getting in the dirt, building a business takes hard work. Yes. So I could not juggle mentally anymore the chaos of scaling Jedi junk removal. I could have gladly got back on the phones, cut the ops manager, got back on the truck, added 10K to my bottom line, 100%. And I'd be, I'd be well off. I'd be doing 30K profit per month Every month, if I took out the ops manager, got back on the phones and rocked it like you guys did and just, you know, crushed it. But that wasn't what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to keep scaling and scaling was impossible. And I didn't want to get back on the truck and I didn't want to get back on the phones. I wanted to do my software because my software is going to change the industry. It really, it really will. It's I'm excited to release the software in a couple months. Hopefully that answers the question. So the two reasons, the same two reasons, couldn't work on my software and it was really driving me crazy. I needed to focus and um, credit was really, really <laughs> getting to me. Now here's the next question I got for you. So once you put it out there on the market, how long did it take to find a buyer and then pretty much have the sale? How long was the process? When we listed it, we got inquiries every day. And the job of the broker is to filter out the real people who are serious, right? So we were getting inquiries all the time and they would have to sign um, documents, send proof of funds that they had money. He would do all the filtering, but we got inquiries all the time. I'd probably say over the journey of selling the company, over the whole process, a hundred people. You know, I met up with 10, give or take, but the process took, I gotta, I gotta go look at the exact dates that I hired him and everything, but I, I want to say it was a a four month process. It would have been so much faster if I just would have just been like, listen to the broker when the broker said, you're probably not, they're probably not going to get approved for the SBA loan because of your history that you're only two years old. He said, he says it's possible, but you know, so I kept going with people who were financing and most people want to finance. There's not a lot of, there wasn't as many cash buyers, right? So most people wanted to finance and each time I financed with somebody, it was a two month process, just freaking waiting. So four months was the total process. It would have been a lot faster if I just kind of denied all the financers, just kept denying and just waiting for maybe 
just waiting for more cash buyers. Cash buyer took instantaneously. He just reviewed my bank statements, looked at my P and L, looked at my yeah bank statements, P and L, looked at all my tax returns, just all the legal stuff. Um, my Clover machine had him log in, look at all the transactions, matched up with the bank statement, all that. So he made the decision pretty quick. And then once you once you do that, he put his deposit down within the week, and then we opened up escrow. Escrow also takes a month. So SBA people, if you go through financing and you know, if they were to get approved, two month process. Escrow, one month process. Escrow is really frustrating too because they're the escrow company that takes in the money, makes sure everything happens, but they also send out a letter that you're selling your company to everybody in the whole wide world, any creditors, debtors, the state, to see if you have any back taxes, EDD, Employee Development Department, uh, Labor Board, to make sure you don't have any uh, bills with them, creditors, uh, uh, um, liens on your company, and you wait an entire month for people to come, give me my money. <laughs> so you have to wait for a month of escrow, then when, you know, and then you pay anything that you owe, if you owe anything. For me, it was about a four or five month process. It could be as fast as, one month, if you get a financer, it could take three months. So somebody goes through SBA and then escrow three months. It's a boring, annoying, frustrating process because you're just sitting there the whole time, like, I just want my money. <laughs> Give me my money. And but you know, because my mind, once you got approved, you're probably happy as hell. Oh man, I was it, it was nice because you know, the whole once you decide to sell, Matt, yeah. um, once you decide to sell, it's like, okay, my gears have switched. My, the switch is flipped. I'm now a software guy, right? In my mind, I'm like software, right? It just, I made the decision. So it's like, I have to get this software out so I can destroy the competition. <laughs> so, but it was, it was really frustrating because I was so, I'm trying to work on my software, right? But I'm still juggling Jedi junk. So I think you answered this already, but Extreme Junk Removal wants to know, uh, how much did the broker charge? My broker charged 10%. 10%. Yep. So how many vehicles did you sell with the company? Was it both dump trucks? Was there a dump trailer too with a pickup yeah, truck? Yeah, so there was, only, there was only one dump truck. He took over the F-150 payment, the, the over the F-150 loan, and there was two trailers. The operations... <laughs> It's, it's kind of a bummer because he got the operation manager's truck, the little white truck that I, my daily driver, just my little 2007 Chevy, but he ended up not needing the ops manager. So it's like, he didn't even need that white truck, but he got one dump truck and he took over the loan, which is really cool. Right? So theoretically you can say he just got one dump truck and the dump trailers. So how many dump trailers did you have? I had two dump trailers paid in cash. And one, I got one brand new one, actually, just a few months ago that was on, that was financed. And how I got approved financing that one is it's easy to get approved with the trailer because they're only seven grand. So my girl's credit was good enough to just get the trailer. So he took over the payments, like everything's switching over to his name for the F-150, the third trailer. And then the two trailers were paid in cash. The white, my operations manager truck was paid in cash. The dump truck was paid in cash. So he got, he got a good amount of assets too. But the asset value is still, you know, the dump truck's got like a hundred something thousand miles on it. You know, it's a 2012 with like a hundred something thousand miles. So you got one dump truck, your uh, other just pickup truck, and then three trailers. So he took over for the at Ford F-150, took over for that one. He got the dump truck. He got the Chevy, which is just a small little Chevy, 2007 Chevy daily driver. Three dump trailers. Whatever. I lost count. So, I had some I had some inventory. Yeah, you did. So uh, you did have some inventory for sure. So I was wondering, what's up with that dump trailer you're giving away? I heard about some Ooh, big event going yeah. on. What's up with that? The Let's dump trailer giveaway. Yeah, man. I'm excited for that one. So you did you see you finally saw the like the the TikTok or the Instagram uh, of me giving away something? Oh yeah, for sure. So I was trying to give away a dump truck. I'll tell you about the dump trailer. But this live event, I'm giving away a dump trailer. Louis Vandervalk is giving away a $5,000 website for free with like 50 pages or 20 pages. I don't know. I'm giving away like some boot, all kinds of shit. I'm talking like $20,000 worth of shit I'm giving away. I'm literally raffling off a brand new dump trailer. The same one that I use. Not, sorry, the same exact model, all that stuff. Not mine. 
mine is gone. It's all gone. All my stuff is gone. <laughs> so I am giving that away to build buzz. I'm going to try to just give a whole bunch of shit. No catch, no gimmicks. Literally, long as you sign up to the stream, I'm going to do a live giveaway, a live raffle. I'm going to have like the thing that you need to type in, like hashtag Andrew's freaking cool, whatever, whatever the <laughs> thing I want you to type to be entered into that raffle. And StreamYard, the software that you're on right now that we're using, lets you do a live raffle and then stream it and show it. And it goes through all the comments, like this little fancy animation. So I'm going to do that. And all you got to do is so show up for the live event, February 24th, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That dump trailer is to build hype for the announcement of my software. So I'm trying to build hype, buzz. That's for the beta, right? February 24th, we're opening up beta. We're only letting in 10 people, sorry, for alpha. Then for beta, a month later, we're letting in 100 people. And then we'll go public with the software July 1st, summer, where we go public. I'm giving away a dump truck. You heard me. I'm giving a dump truck away. Yes. $80,000 I'm giving away. Now, I get now how do I enter for that? <laughs> Let me know how I enter for that. Dude, you, you, you just you just show up to the live event and just type in, I'm giving away a dump truck. So that's Andrew, that look cool. Andrew, I'm going to have my dad do it, my mom do it. I'm going to um, have a Julio do it. When bro, is your, bro, when is your I life mean, is that's honestly a good tactic. You should. <laughs> but then your mom's going to be like, hey, no, I'm selling this. I'm taking the 100 grand. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, so. At the end of the day, if you do the num, like I'm just gonna give you some basic numbers that really piss me off. If you take House Call Pro at 169 bucks a month, right? Times 12 months, you stay subscribed. That's 2,028 dollars a year. Okay, so if you take the 2,028 dollars a year that a customer spends, let's just take an 80 thousand dollar dump truck divided by 2,028. That's only 39 customers. It's only 39 people that need to sign up to pay me back for the dump truck. The math is there. So. Now, I'm not going to charge 169 bucks. I'm going to charge less, so I'll probably need double the I'll need 80 people to sign up. Now, is me giving something away like this dramatic going to build hype and buzz and people be like, "Oh my god, Andrew's so cool. He's Of course I'll try his software. He's giving a freaking dump truck away." You know, good old hype. So, I'm hoping that I can build trust with people that I'm giving everything away for free that'd be like, "Oh my god, I'll try Andrew's software for $49. Why not? If it sucks, I'll just cancel." Right? So, that's the plan, but I'm hoping my software doesn't suck. <laughs> so the dump trailer is on the event. When are you giving away the dump truck? That'll be it's summer. Time. Oh, summertime. Okay. Summer. Cool. Yeah. So when we go public. So who's paying the taxes on that when you give it away? I'm just curious. You know, I'll probably I'll I'll cover the taxes. <laughs> he said he's gonna cover it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys heard it. Andrew said he'll cover it. When is your yeah. life? February. Okay, so I'm gonna try to make this very clear for people because there's two events going on and some people are confused. Both events are free. There's an in-person and a live virtual streaming on my YouTube. There's going to be a giveaway. I'm giving away really cool content. I'm dropping my book, all kinds of stuff, free content and stuff that's just going to be awesome. You know, and also announcing my software. That event is going to be February 24th, 12 PM Pacific standard time. That's the virtual live streaming event. And then you have to attend the live streaming event live to be eligible for the giveaways, for the $10,000 dump trailer, for the $5,000 website, for the boots, and yada, 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 yada. The in-person event, people wanted to fly in for the in-person event, too. I was like, oh, my God. They wanted to come to the – because I am I was just going to have a, a drink, just meet and greet downstairs. That was it. Right after, you know, at 5 o'clock p.m., just a few hours after the virtual, just downstairs at a cool, really – a very, very vibey restaurant bar – with an area that they let you rent so you can just kind of like mingle and stuff. But people told me they're flying in and I was like, yo, don't waste your money. This is just a meet and greet. This is not a seminar, not educational. I will be giving away shirts and hats and books and stuff at the, the in-person event, but people just wanted to come anyway. So now I decided to turn it into a bonfire on the beach right by the restaurant. And then we go meet and drink, uh, meet and have drinks and food at the restaurant nearby and talk and do small giveaways. You know, I'm going to give away subscriptions to my software, but just other little things I'm going to give away. Then the next morning we do a beach walk and a mastermind breakfast. So we all just eat at a breakfast and just talk business. So I turned it into something a little more for the in-person and this is still free. It's all free. Everything's free. So there's going to be smaller giveaways and something I wanted to mention also, Louis Vandervolk is also kind of, I want to say like a partner on this event. He's also putting some money down towards the giveaway for the dump trailer. 
Oh, nice. And he's giving away a $5,000 website. And we all know Louis Van. So he's going to be at this event with me speaking, not only for like a few minutes, just talking about some cool stuff he has coming and he's doing the giveaway for his website. So Lewis has partnered with me on this event. So I'm really excited because um, it's going to be big. So have you announced the guest speakers yet or no? The guest speakers as of now is Lewis. And I'm trying to get a surprise person possibly. I'm working on that yet. Uh, on that, I might just make it a surprise. You know how like at concerts, they'll have like a special mm-hmm. singer guest like surprise. So we'll see what happens. Nice, nice. So you said the event's on the 24th at 12 o'clock. You got to register. We'll leave a link in the yeah, description yeah. If, so for you. On every video of mine on my channel, it, the video description, I know a lot of people don't go to those video description links, but yeah, I'll give you a link or something that you can put in. You can pin a comment in your thing and you can put it in your description. But yeah, there's a, a link for to subscribe for the virtual. And then there's a link to RSVP for the in-person. So there's two. I'd like you to register for both. So the in-person, is that the next day or when is that one? Same day, same day. day, So so I'd love for you guys to come. Um, I hope you guys can make it to the event and come meet and greet. And like, there's going to be a lot of people are coming. So if you guys can mark it on your calendar and come down, that'd be awesome. Um, I know it's quite the journey. So the in-person is when? So it's the 24th. We might make it out there. February 24th is the... February 24th. If you guys can make it, that'd be super fun. So um, we got a lot of people coming, uh, flying out. Steezy's flying out. Ricardo, <laughs> junk guys, he's flying out. So it should be really fun. And I've got 70 people RSVP'd for the in-person event. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. 70, so, yeah. which, is, which is insane because I was thinking, okay, live virtual event, cool. Let's try to get 1,000 people. I'm going to pump this for the next three months, get 1,000 people live streaming this event. You know, that's my plan. That's my goal. And I was like, now let's do an in-person downstairs, you know, just meet with the local LA companies, Orange County, maybe some guys from San Diego will drive up, you know, for just like a little meet and greet. It ended up being 70 people. I was blown away by how much support that we got. So I was super excited and super nervous because now I got 70 people that I'm trying to make sure that this event is cool and worth it. So now I'm like, oh man, I got to make sure this is cool. Now here, here's the next question. What are we going to eat when we go? (laughs) I haven't figured that out yet, but don't worry. It's going to be good. There might be wings. There might be pizza. But this restaurant and bar, it's a, it's like a really nice restaurant bar. But it's got the vibes where you can stand around and like hang out and talk and chat. So it has really good bar food, like wings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's also got an event space area. So I might like cater some sushi or something like that. I don't know. Nice. Who nice. knows? Maybe McDonald's and McFlurries. No, I'm just kidding. He said some McFlurries. I love yeah. me some fries. <laughs> right? Their fries are good. Yes. So here's a question we got for you. For anyone thinking about selling selling their business, what advice would you give them? I say I'm thinking about, you know, I'm thinking about selling Sonoma Strong Hall. And what, what should I do? So step number one, have your profit and loss statements ready. They're going to want to see P&Ls. That was definitely the most important P&Ls and tax returns. If your tax returns do not show the truth, you're not going to get the money, right? If you're hiding money and you're trying to like, you you can claim you can claim as many deductions as you want. That's fine. Try to deduct the whole world. Dep- claim depreciation, claim all these expenses, claim your home office, because you can explain that to them. So even if your gross profit is, let's say, 100K for the year, but really you made 200K, but you just did some tax magic with depreciation and all whatever. You can explain this to the buyer and they'll understand. For example, for me in the first year, I had to buy assets. So my gross profit was a little bit lower because I had bought an assets in the beginning, right? So technically my first year would have been more. Now those assets are owned and can you'll continue to make money. So step one, you got to do your P&Ls. You have to have your bookkeeping done. You have to have tax returns. The more tax returns, the more years in business, the better. What other stuff did he ask for? Um, so pretty much ask, show that money. Don't hide that money. Make sure you show, show, show the money. Be prepared. Have your books ready. Oh, make sure you you have a, a business account where everything's separated. Make sure that all the deposits going into the account will match up with everything. Like, for example, I use a credit card machine, so it's very easy. He would see the credit card machine deposits going into my account. He wanted 12 months of bank statements. So really try to keep your uh, your business and personal life separate. <laughs> you know, don't be going to the uh, 
you know, using your business card at the strip club or something, you know, because they're going to be going through your, your bank statements. Keep all that professional profit loss. Yeah. P&L tax returns are the big one and bookkeeping, you know, try to have your books in order. Bookkeeping is not 100% necessary if you have good P&Ls and you have good tax returns. But if you have your bookkeeping in place, you know, your QuickBooks and all that stuff, that definitely helps. And oh, another thing, this is not something that has to be done, but when the business runs itself is very enticing to more buyers. If you try to sell a business where they're, you're selling a job, which is fine, you're selling them a job, just realize you're going to get way less inquiries because you're selling a job, right? Yes, a job that may make good money and maybe they want to take over and grow it and expand it. Of course, you can explain that. For example, you got you have a great business that's growing, but you're still very involved. So you will naturally get less inquiries because you haven't automated it. You know, that's that's why I hired an ops manager. That's why I have someone run the whole thing so that I had got more buyers. So keep that in mind too. It works both ways, right? It, it, it works both ways. So yeah, that's really, that's really it. Just make sure you, you can show the money. So it's pretty show much like money. trying to get approved for buying a house. You got to do all exactly. that. Stuff. Yeah. And yeah, if you, if you look sketchy at all, it's going to be hard to sell your business. If you can't show the paper trail. Yeah. Um, my next thing is um, what, is there anything you would do differently? For the sale? Yeah, for anything. For anything. Hmm. Yeah, I think there's, okay. So in terms of the sale, I wish I was a little more up to, up to speed with my, uh, my taxes and my P and L's. I'm very organized with everything else, but I was a little behind on that. So I really wish my, I would have kept my books up to date a little bit better. I'm more of like, I pay attention to my ad spend and I make sure I'm getting a good return and are my pro, you know, I was tracking on a daily P and L, like if I'm making money every day, but I didn't have it set in a professional way, like an actual P and L statement like that an account would make. Oh, and a balance sheet. Sorry guys, you gotta have a balance sheet too. So I didn't have a balance sheet. Technically speaking, somebody who's organized would have a P and L and a balance sheet every month, right? You'd have one monthly, but it, you can do it at the end of the year too. So I would have been way more organized with my P and L's and my balance sheets and my tax returns and all of that stuff to make the sale go a little bit faster. I also probably would have denied since you guys wouldn't have to do this hypothetical, you know, we're talking about you selling hypothetically. I would have denied every SBA person now knowing that I'm a young business, only two years with only one year SBA really wants three years of tax returns. So I should have just not wasted my time or stress with people trying to finance through SBA. Now in general, I probably wouldn't have financed my second dump truck with a shark loan. <laughs> so sorry, this was actually on my first dump truck. Sorry, because I didn't have the cash to buy a $60,000 dump truck in cash, but I wanted to launch a second location. This really set me back a little bit. I pulled out a shark loan and I called a shark loan. It's actually called an MCA loan. Don't ever pull out an MCA loan. It's called a merchant cash advance. It's what people do when they're desperate and they have sales. So if you're a restaurant with merchant process, you know, you're processing credit cards and you have merchant sales and you're processing credit card transactions and they could log in and see that you're constantly processing, you can pull out a pretty big advance. So that one set me back. I probably should have just been a little more patient. I did a lot of things to kind of work around my bad credit that, you know, it ended up working out, but it did put me in tricky situations. So Slow growth if you have bad credit, you know, is the only way or partner with somebody with good credit or fix your credit. So it's all, I don't know if you've noticed, it's all related to credit. Guys, don't fudge your credit up. Do not fudge your credit up. Credit is everything in America. And it is so frustrating that I destroyed it during COVID because prior to COVID, I was 700s, you know, don't fudge your credit up would be, that would be what I would change. So um, can you explain to people that don't know the difference between profit and loss and a balance sheet? Yeah. So a profit and loss statement really just shows exactly that. Your income, your expenses, and you just break it down, advertising expenses. And you can Google P&L sheets, but at the end of the day, it's your income and your expenses and your profit. And a profit and loss is generally by quarter. So Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, you have it on a spreadsheet. And at the end of the year, you'd see your total PL. Now, balance sheets, 
is a little more complicated because the the assets and liabilities have to cancel each other out. It's it's more of an accounting thing, and I don't like doing it. But at the end of the day, it shows your assets and your liabilities so that you see on paper what assets and liabilities you have, meaning debts, you know, loans and debts, and then assets, meaning equipment, tools, your equipment, cash in the bank, yada, yada, yada. The balance sheet sounds easier to make, honestly, but it's harder to make because there's some stupid accounting shit where they crap. God, man, I can't not cuss. Sorry. It's um, all good. I was raised with a filthy mouth. <laughs> The balance sheet's a little more difficult because in the accounting world, they have to like equal each other and it's really frustrating. And then you have this other thing called owner's equity that shows like how much owner's equity you have in the company. So it's a little fancier. You can hire somebody, an accountant, a bookkeeper, as you know, they'll do it for like 50 bucks or you just have your bookkeeper if you have one on, you know, if you do have a bookkeeper, you should have a PL and a balance sheet every month. If you want to play by the, you know, by the big rules and you plan to one day, five years from now sell, for example, let's say five years from now, you're like, yo, Matt, Matt and Jojo, we got three trucks running. We could probably get a milli, two milli. If you have all your ducks in a row for, you'll get five X, seven X, you know, depending. So um, yeah, that's the difference between a PL statement and a balance sheet. So the next question I got is, did you have like a lot of buyers? Was it even a big deal if people were like shied away because you were spending a bunch of money on ads? Like they seen, oh, he spends yeah. this much money on ads. I don't want to deal with a company like that because of- Great, great question. That's actually a really good one because yes, one buyer did get scared of it. The other buyers, they were excited, just as excited as me because I'm racking up a half a million dollars in points every year. Okay, so- if they're not scared and they understand that you got to spend money to make money, not all the time, you know, not all the time, you know, you guys have a pretty good foundation you built, but if you want to, if you want leads right away, you know, and you want them consistently, Google ads is not a bad route. So I would always be like, Hey, I'm, I wish I had an Amex platinum. A half a million dollars a year is so many plane tickets, so much cash back. And eventually he might get invited to get the Amex black card, but I would tell them like I was losing out on the points, like so many points that you could be earning a half a million in points from gas dump and advertising fees. And when I explained them like that, like, Hey, I wish I was collecting points. When I would meet with up with them in person and explain, I'd be like, I, I wish I had an Amex right now. And I kind of like sold them on that. And they were like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it did turn off one guy for sure. But I see value in the points for sure well you know long as you know the ads convert which my ads do convert you know they've been running for two years and four months and they do great so long as you know the ad spend is working because companies spend millions on ad spend you know ad spends a normal part of business you know that's just what people like most companies do is they have ad spend so that's kind of but the thing that makes it a little different and scarier is i'm dependent on ad spend however my repeat and referrals are ever growing so the next question i got is are they using the same people that ran your google ads or someone yep. totally different same person so pretty much everything yeah. trans transed over to them then yeah, all the I all your employees and stuff too what's cool is since i have two years of data you want my account and google must know this because google makes your ad account transferable so i actually just gave them my account so they have all the history of my, it, all my ad spend, my half a million dollars. They can go back in history and see everything, right? They have my whole ad account. So, and that's good data because that's data that Google has. Google knows that I'm an ad spender. They have all the data. So Google makes it transferable. So they took over my account. So uh, Megaskins Gaming asked, will the dump trailer winner show proof that they run a junk removal company to win it? This is actually a good question, Mega Skins. I have not decided because, okay, I was thinking, how do I make sure that they're going to try to do a junk company? So I feel like there does have to be some verification. Like I, I shouldn't just let some random come in that has no, doesn't want to do the dump, uh, the junk removal business at all. You know, maybe he just sees the live stream and is like, yeah, and just goes enters real quick. I think that would be unfair to the people who truly have one or want to start one. So I might do some type of verification with the person 
I haven't figured that out yet, but yeah, I would rather it be somebody in the business or is going to start their own business. Cool. Cool. So here's another question for you. What is your future goals? I know it's your software and all that, but what's your plan? You trying to be a, uh... The next Bill Gates or? Uh, so I'm not as smart as Elon or Bill Gates. I do have big dreams to build an empire. I do want to build a unicorn and a unicorn is a billion dollar company. That's always been, always been one of my dreams. And the more we get into tech and the more that things are happening, the more billion dollar companies are created all the time now. So it's not, it's not out of reach. And if you just do some basic numbers and you look at House Call Pro, or Jobber. House Call Pro has 20,000 companies signed up with them. 20,000 out of 2.5 million home service businesses in America, just America. So that's a small fraction. They're worth $1.2 billion, 1.2 billion. I think I can get to 5,000 junk removal companies by myself alone, just by going hard in the industry on YouTube and talking to people within 12 months, that will put me at 300 to 400 million dollar company with just 5,000 people signed up, nice. which is that's already a 90 million dollar company. I run the numbers. So, my goal is to build an empire. My goal is to also bring the best software that's not going to charge you $169 a month for the core features. We're going to have awesome bells and whistles that you can add that will, you know. But even if you were to add all of our marketing tools, the phone system, the core system, it's still going to be cheaper than House Call Pro. Our core program is going to be $49 a month and have all the same shit that everybody else has and more. Nice. So nice. yeah. So that that yeah, my long-term goal is to build a a a beautiful product that people love, but that also becomes uh, an empire. That's a great goal. I, I can see you doing it too. I got no doubt. I got no yeah, doubt. You want to know a fun fact? Yeah. I actually raised a little bit of money. From with inside my junk removal company, obviously I have no income. And I was like, okay, I'm going to burn through my savings. Like, you know, even though I just sold my company, I'm just going to burn through it, you know, paying my living expenses and paying the team that I'm working with. So I raised money within the junk removal company and, you know, they all five of the guys in my junk removal. And I made sure that they understand it's a risk. You have to have $5,000 put aside. But if you want to bet on me, 5,000 can turn into 5 million in three years if you think I can hit the finish line. Point being is I raised some money within this community, a couple guys local in LA down the street who run their own big junk removal companies. Invest. So it's just really cool because I'm excited to come back in the future three years from now. Be like, are you glad that you invested? I brought you 5 million back because tech is the only place that you can 1000 X your money. So that's kind of my goal. I'm ex That's a future video that I'm hoping to make that I interviewed all the people come back with $5 million checks because they cashed out their shares. Nice, nice. So someone had a question right here. Oh, I thought he. Oh, you got. Oh, I think yeah. he wanted to um, talk about. It. So Carlos says, "No hate, but why a few junk removal co-owners on YouTube end up selling their biz within the first three years?" That's a great question, uh, Carlos. I have an entire video on this alone. Why people leave the junk removal industry to go sell education or courses. And hey, I have a course, not going to lie. You know, it's it's one of the, it's a little bit on the cheaper side, but my course is more towards Google ads. Hey, I'm not going to lie. Who, who doesn't want extra money? I kept getting asked, you know, so I'm not here to, you know, lie and beat around the bush, but I'll tell you this. I didn't start this YouTube channel to sell a course. I, don't, I didn't need them. I didn't make $100,000 from courses. I didn't even make 50,000. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you what I've realized in this business, Carlos. There's a lot of people when they get into this, they don't realize how hard the work is. It's the hardest, easiest money that I've ever made. You know, obviously you wear a lot of a different hats to grow a business. And I think a lot of people, they reach a stagnant plateau in this business. They get to that 10 to 20 K a mark or 40 K, whatever the number is. And they realize in order to grow and make more money and not be stuck at 10 K a month profit, it's hard operationally getting employees, having good credit, running, turning this into a business that scales is very, very hard. Hitting 1 million is easy. It, like not to be cocky, right? What I live in LA, it's much different. Maybe in Wyoming, it's 300 K two trucks running Google ads. It's not easy, but what I'm saying is 1 million. That's the first milestone. Getting to 3 million is the next. 
that one to three million gross revenue barrier is astronomically hard. Mad respect to JRA, stand up guys, junk doctors. It, that is a different level. If I had good credit, I would have tried. So I think they hit a plateau and they're like, fuck, crap, crap. This is a lot harder than expected. I can go shill marketing services and stuff like that, make the same amount of money with less work. And I think that's why most people become coaches or gurus. I'm not calling anybody out. There's a lot of great people out there. Like I definitely do not want to rock the boat or sit, talk bad of anybody. But if you have the credit, you're smart, you work your butt off like you guys have, you can scale and make seriously good money. Hope that answers your question. No, you're you're 100 percent right because I remember when we were living in our apartment complex, and the first time we had like 200k in the bank that I could touch, I was like, "Holy shit! I got all this Say money." How much? 200k. First time I had 200k in the bank, like cash money. I'm living in an apartment complex. I'm nah, fresh out of jail. I'm out of rehab. You know what I mean? I had 200k in the bank. It took a lot of hard work to get there. Yeah, so anyone yeah. can start the business, but to keep the business going and stay consistent and getting those repeat customers and building the brand is really hard to do. And a lot yeah, of people, yeah. I think they have a problem where they, they try to do too much too fast. Like you're yep. a smart guy. You ran the Google ads. You know how to do all that. I yep. feel bad for the people that don't know how to do it. And they got a bunch of car payments or truck payments and they're on there stressing because they have five employees or three employees yep. and they're slow. Or they grew too fast. They grew too fast. Exactly. No, it's it's growing too fast. That's the problem. Unless you have capital and money and population to run Yelp, Google, Facebook, you can't scale fast. You need the population, but you also need the cash to facilitate running Facebook, Yelp, Google ads. Otherwise, you gotta you gotta earn earn your way. Repeat, slow growth. It's really hard to do it fast. At the end of the day, it is like any other business, you have to work your arse off. The illusion of the $1,000 a day videos. And you, you know, we, uh, you're a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. Now we got to make those videos. You know, it's just, that's what we do. We make videos to share content because it's the truth. We, you can make a thousand dollars a day and you could do it. You can get lucky. You can just go to a shopping mall and say, Hey, you got an overflowing dumpster, bro. 300 bucks. I'll get rid of it. And just go around, just keep doing that. And boom, you got a thousand bucks in a day and you can, but then the problem is, is sustaining, sustaining that people don't realize that yes, you can make a thousand dollars a day and get yourself out of a tight situation. But if you want to keep making a thousand dollars a day, you got to treat this like a real business. And that's tough. Yeah, I totally agree too, for sure. Yeah, we have uh, Junk Solutions DFW says kudos to you all, but he's over there having trouble with his Google My Business page. Yeah. And <laughs> He, he he sucks on computers and he learned how to do Craigslist and that's how he's been maintaining. Kudos to you for maintaining from Craigslist, but definitely my man, figure out the Google My Business, pay somebody on Fiverr if you can't, 50 bucks, get that rocking and rolling. The, the Google and My Business is your most important thing. I if, agree. if you could only pick one thing, that would be the thing to do. I agree. Hundred percent, and actually, Mega Skins. Can I? Uh, can you pull his one up right before that? Because I will. I do want to say, um, this was a, something that I under that I now lear have learned. Every junk removal company should run their business as a franchise, have systems in place. So I originally wanted to scale to twenty to a hundred trucks. That was my vision when I first started hitting those thousand dollars a day, the, here's the, I watched an Alex Hermosi video and it, it blew me away because Alex Hermosi has an equation. He says, if the startup capital to start a new business is X amount of dollars. And in the first year you make X amount of dollars back, he says, do it, launch it yourself, not franchise. So based on his math, it made sense to not franchise. So I was thinking, okay, launching a new location, 50 grand, 10 K down on the truck, 5K on yard signs, door hangers, shirts, apparel, and 20K aside for ads. 50K startup costs. I can launch a new location anywhere I want. And then you pull back a half a million. From the 50K startup costs, I can bring in a half a million. So Matt, I was thinking like, this is too easy. Why in the hell is everybody franchising? I launched my first truck. It worked. I launched my second truck. It worked. I was like, I can keep doing this over and over and over and over. But everybody's population is different. Google ads are getting more competitive. Sometimes it's not consistent. You need slow growth. It's too hard to just pop up location after location, after location, after location. It doesn't work out that way. 
And then I started to realize operationally, it is hard. Just me running two locations is hard operationally on me mentally. So then it's like, okay, shit, you need an ops manager to run three locations, right? Like an ops manager could probably handle three locations. So then I was like, okay, this is a little bit harder than I expected to just, if I want to go to a different state and launch three locations, I'm going to need, there's a lot of moving pieces, ops manager, where you're going to park these trucks. And I was like, now I get it. Now I see why people are franchising. This is too big of a task for, unless you got a million in the bank, you know, unless you got the capital, this is too hard. There's only one way to do that. And that is slow growth. Uh, Stand up guys, I think at 15 locations. I don't know if he's a franchise. I think he might not be a franchise. So that's, an, that's impressive if he's, if he's not a franchise, but now I realize why people franchise. Yeah. I, I would never pay a franchise to do it. Hell no. Yeah, start my- I, I mean, Honestly, yeah. just watch me and you, right? Just watch your yeah. channel, my channel. <laughs> you, you can buy a dump trailer for like 10 grand or and then go seven. Get a, you can get one for seven, a brand new one. Seven and then get a pickup truck to pull up for another eight yeah. grand. And then you're in business with some decals, some signs. The franchise fees, man. Like after the startup costs, it's like you're giving them 10% every month. Like, ouch. On top of workers' comp and payroll, clutter reduction. Um, what's up, my man? What's up, clutter? Mm-hmm. I think you're right. That's why I think you are right. I, I need to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure he's not franchised, which is impressive. Very impressive. So is there any questions inside the building for Andrew before we shut this one down? Yep. If you have a question for uh, Mr. Andrew, but <laughs> he's See ready. That should, that should be the damn thumbnail right there. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions um, before we go? Yeah. But Matt, um, if no questions come through, Matt and Jojo, thank you for having me again. Honestly, like, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. I'm still sad that I didn't see you last time. So I'm hoping that you guys can make it this time. It'd be cool to see you guys. Dinner on me. <laughs> so yeah, I'm if sure. for whatever reason you win the dump trailer, I'm making your ass come get it though. Okay. <laughs> Hey, if I win it, if I win it for some reason, I'll give it away again. Oh, that would be re- that would be cool. If you won it, you did a giveaway. That'd be cool. If we that'd won it, crazy. I would give it away and give some on top of it too. Just put it I'll out try there. Try to outdo me. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. So yeah, me and JoJo. We'd have to add something to yeah. it. Yeah, might yeah, be yeah. a load of trash in it or something. Who knows? <laughs> So yeah, me and so I hope you guys make the live virtual event and then and then come to the in person event. How long is the drive from um, Sonoma County? You know what? Well, we got we got an airport right down the street. We yeah, can hop we'll, on an we'll airplane and fly out there. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Let me know because that'd be super awesome. Uh, and uh, if you guys need to know hotel, just just hit me up. I'll let you know the hotels nearby. And um, yeah. You know what? We'll we'll, we'll make it. We're oh, gonna, we're we're announcing we're, right now that we're, we're we'll gonna fly there. out there. We will be hell yeah. There That's what I like to hear. That's person, awesome. February twenty fourth. So we're gonna we're gonna have all the big the big YouTubers down. This is gonna be cool. Yeah, Steezy, yeah. Steezy, and you guys is gonna be awesome, and Ricardo That's as well. Great. So we actually do have a couple of questions that came in. Uh, At your service, trash says, "What do you think are good branding colors?" And I'll just answer really quick. Yeah. I like anything that's bright and bold and stands out. I'm gonna have to agree with you. I yes. bright get that get the attention. That's yeah. Yep. And one more question, LA Trash Junkers. Is your buyer going to rebrand the business or are they keeping it? Yeah, no, that would be um shooting himself in the foot because I built the brand for two years and four months. So we do have repeats, we have referrals. We are on the first page of Google towards the bottom, which sucks. But if he stays at it for the next couple of years, Los Angeles is a very competitive keyword. Junk removal, Los Angeles, he will start creeping up. So no, absolutely not. So is he a junk removal business? Yes, he has He has his own junk removal business. No, he does a pretty- lot of demo stuff though, a lot of demo. So is he keeping his business or is he just adding it yep, to yep. Jedi? He's got, no, he's, he's running both. He's got his that he's been running for five years, something like that, three, four, five years. And he does a lot of demo stuff on that one. More demo, lots of demo. And then he's got this business. Nice, nice. Yeah. So this has been great. It's been awesome yeah. talking to you and finding out all, uh, you know, what all goes into selling a successful junk removal business. And yep. 
I've enjoyed also hearing about your live event. And now I'm excited because we're going to be there February 24th. Yeah, we'll wait. be there. Awesome. I'm going to hold you guys to it. Yeah, hold us to it. Thank you so much, uh, Matt and Jojo, for having me again. And I just had, if you guys haven't seen my live, <laughs> I got caught up at the last, but we were going to cancel. We were going to end it soon anyways. But my lady <laughs> tried to go pick something up and she dropped the glass. So we abruptly ended my live with you guys on my channel. <laughs> this is just cute. I had to put oh, it in. Oh, that is <laughs> So when you buy it back, will you call it Return of the Jedi? Oh, that's <laughs> okay, a good one right there. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. So yeah. when you buy it back, will you call it Return of the Jedi? That's a good one, my man. You made, really, you made really me good. laugh there. So... I think once you grow your first location, you have a family or friend you can trust, you can keep opening locations. That's a great, yeah, that's a good plan too. If you, yeah, yeah have them run it and you grow another one and do it slowly in the right way, that's a great idea. All right. Hey, can I ask you one one quick question? I I, I was in such chaos last time because my lady was crying because she uh, dropped a glass table in front of somebody's house. So we had to rush out to go sweep up the glass. It was obnoxious. I had to do junk removal, even though I was at a junk removal. What were your guys' plans? Um, what are your guys' future plans? Because I know you just got a second truck. So our plan is we're going to invest in real estate. So we're on the hunt right now for another Ooh. house. And we're going nice. to turn it into a SLE, a sober living place for guys. And then pretty nice. much push that out. That's the goal. So we got money sitting in the bank. We don't want it sitting in the bank. We're going to reinvest it. Are you going to make it like a more affordable one and not one of those crazy expensive ones or? Well, it's not going to be crazy expensive. Um, yep. It's California, the rent. Yeah. No, I've just heard, I've always just heard like they're like, so, like 30 grand a year or something. Like oh, or 30 no. grand for three months. Yeah. It's not a drug a treatment center place, but it's just a no, sober no. Uh, no, housing no. for sober living. What it is, is you can, you know, we kind of, thought we, we definitely knew that we wanted to do real estate and we just weren't sure where to go with it. But the sober living environments, you can rent out the rooms and it's usually a couple couple of guys to each room because, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's their path of they got out of a program, yet they can't yep. quite afford to live on their own. So it's like in the middle. That's but actually a great idea. We calculated it and we love it because we're helping others, but we're also making money. Because right. it will, you know, it will more than pay for the mortgage. And so the extra income we're going to, you know, put to the side. And that's the income that we're going to use to buy all of our other properties. You know, one of the, you, got, yeah. you guys have got a good plan. You guys have been killing it. That's that's awesome. So that's the goal. So, you know, we get all the furniture off of junk jobs. So we'll put all that in there. So hopefully we can find a four to five bedroom house out here so that's the goal we're in the process of doing all the paperwork for that and just uh keep our eyes out for it. and you never know we might come across the house at a job maybe we'll find that a tore down messed up house that's a hoarder house and someone wants to just sell it we don't know yet. yeah it's one of the best things about junk removal is yeah. opportunities yeah. come your way all the time this junk removal yes i see I see a day. Hey, uh, can I answer the last question to leave everybody on suspense from Mega Skins Gaming? Um. Is, oh, is Chad still with Jedi? Can I leave this on suspense? So, if you guys want to hear the full answer, tune into my channel. I'm going to be posting the how I sold my company video, and I'm going to be calling this video the dark side of employees. Chad 180 on me. I fired him because he deserved it. I won't get into that, but guys, he stole ten thousand dollars from me from the company. He racked up all the business credit cards. He stole all the money from the truck. It was bad, 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 bad. Um, I took him to uh, restrain, try to file a restraining order. And now I'm taking him to small claims. I've already got the court date. And I have small claims with him again in February, uh, February 9th, I think. I have a lot of learning lessons of that video coming out of why. And I want to talk a lot about, you know, employees and how to do things proper. And, when, you know, when things when crap hits the fan so to leave you on suspense that ended really bad mega skins gaming so uh tune in to hear about that in the next video <laughs> this week <laughs> love it, love it. matt and jojo love you guys can't wait to see you thank you so much 
Yeah. yeah. And since we still have a couple of people on here, let's announce the radio station, the 106.5 radio Ooh. station. Um, yeah. Do you have, do you know the call numbers? So I don't know the number. I know the, I know the, uh, the station is 106.5 FM radio and also 1055 AM radio. We're going to have a radio station once a week in the morning. It's called trash talk radio and it starts in February, it starts in February. So we're going to have a lot of people on there. So it's going to be it's going to be off the hook. Yeah. And we'll let you know more about it, too, because it's actually being broadcasted on um, on some multiple things. So like on on the radio, radio and some podcasts. And Ooh, I love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So YouTube does open doors. You it never does. know. It really yeah, does. It definitely or, does. All right. Well, we appreciate you hopping on and uh, we'll catch We'll see you uh, February 24th. See you February 24th. Thanks, guys. Right. I'm looking forward to that free meal, too. Yep. And uh, as always, toodles. Let's tell you my story real quick. I've always been a software engineer my entire life. I started programming when I was 10 years old, but I started with HTML on AOL 3.0 and they would teach you basic HTML tags. So I was learning this shit at 10 or 11 years old. Then I just slowly progressed and started building more websites, learning PHP, learning databases like MySQL and all that stuff. The last app that I was working on was a travel app. I raised $150,000 from investors, and that was actually right before COVID hit. It was a travel app meant to travel with friends across the world, the globe, and they didn't even want you to hang out with your family. I kept telling the investors, it's gotta go away someday. I have the app semi ready to go. You know, we wanted to start doing beta testing, but nobody wanted to fly, let alone pay for this new experimental travel app that I was trying to show to the world. Me and my lady had our second kid, newborn, and we're burning down to our last few thousand dollars. And it's getting to a point where I'm like, we need money now. So one of my friends I was talking to, and he's like, dude, I used to do junk removal. I looked into it, I Googled it, I found Sonoma Strong, $1,000 a day, Steve Conroy, $1,000 a day, $2,000 a day, and I was like, a thousand dollars a day. Started with Thumbtack, started with Craigslist, got to Google Ads probably by month one or like the end of month one, month two, I think. Went from 200 a day to 500 a day to a thousand a day. From there, it's just been incredible. This is a great industry. If you're stuck and you need to figure out how to make some extra money, you can grow this into a very profitable business. You can do very well for yourself. I'm doing very well for myself. It takes a lot of work outside of the labor part, the marketing part, the hiring part. Everything is hard. It has potential. It is a very easy-ish, predictable path to make money. The service industry is so much easier to get into because it requires just your time and everybody's gonna need this service, okay? You trade your time for money. It doesn't matter if it's landscaping, moving, junk removal. There are so many home services that you can get into that don't require a skill. People need this home service. So getting into the services business is a very safe, predictable, slow growth path, but very doable. That is the beautiful thing about junk removal. So guys, if you wanna check out the course and you want your A to Z on how to build a junk removal business, check it out in the link below.